it is seed starting time here in zone three. Um, it might be a little bit early, but because I'm going to be starting some of these seeds inside of our greenhouse in the snow, it's not too early. Um, I'm going a new direction this year. I'm gonna try something new. You know, the whole last year and a half has been everything new, so why stop now? <laughs> um, I am going to be using soil blocks to start my seeds this year. And I got this from, I think I got this from Johnny's Seeds. I think they're about $40. And it's basically a one and a half inch square. And I'm gonna put squares of soil inside of these trays. And you notice these are a mesh bottom. Um, and I think they're specifically sold for microgreens, which I'm also going to try this year. But also these will be good for um, soil blocks because the air pruning at the bottom. So what I'm learning about um, soil blocks is that the air that will be between the soil blocks and underneath and above is called air pruning and the pruning will stop the roots from growing and getting root bound. Once the roots hit the air, um, they're supposed to stop growing. So, and then it makes for a healthier transplant when I put them in the greenhouse or outside. So that's our new project for this spring. Um, so I'm gonna get started. I've heard is you're supposed to get this to the consistency of peanut butter. Oh. It's going to be a lot of water. This soaked up a ton of water already. Alright, let's try it out. What I've read is that once you um, have enough water in it, it should just kind of, you should be able to squeeze it and just have it drip a little bit out. I have much, much too much water in here. Cause it's, I've got it like streaming out of my hand. So that's okay because I have more mix. And all I'm using is this Pro Mix. This Pro Mix All Purpose. It just has peat moss, peat humus, perlite, some ground limestone, and the mycorrhiza. Um, so that's all this is. And I think I have it, maybe actually a partial brick of the coconut core in here. But I'm just going to add a little more to <laughs> soak up some of that water. I'm really excited to try this soil blocking um, because I don't know how many of you are familiar with Elliot Coleman, um, but after reading his New Organic Grower book, um, especially I think living in the zone that we live in, you know, like technically our growing season is about three months long. Um, we grow much longer than that, especially using the greenhouse um, and then cool weather crops. But I think that putting the healthiest transplants you can into the soil um, takes away from that transplant shock that you can have, which can hold you, basically slows down your process for a week or two. This will give us even more of a growing season. In a way, it'll extend our growing season because I hopefully won't have to deal with that transplant shock. Okay, let's try it again. Much better. You can only get... Okay. Mm. Okay. 
can see it coming out of my between my fingers a little bit but that's about all the moisture I want okay so let's try this So I've got a pretty packed full. I'm going to set it in here and hopefully it doesn't all fall apart. Let's see. Oh, look at that. It stayed together pretty well. Oh, you know what I don't have in there? There are supposed to be these little, I think they call them dibbles in there. And I forgot to put those in. So I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, so when you get these in the box, you're supposed to put them in here. Did you get? Thirteen. There were this morning. There were thirteen this morning. Hmm. Well, I don't think we got out there last night to bring in the last ones. Maybe I do need your help. Kind of hard on the hands to get these in there. I need to get those in there. They just snap in. But I didn't get that second one in there all the way, did I? Oh, thanks. So I think I'm just gonna keep these here and stick a seed in them and they'll be fine. Now we can do it the right way. shoved in there good. And you can see the difference. This row is the one with the dibbles and this one doesn't have any. So, Well, I got all of the onions seeded today. I was gonna just do a quick rundown of the kind of onions. I've got more onions than I've ever grown. This year is the year of onions at Rustic Cedar Homestead. So, I did a yellow sweet Spanish onion. This one is supposed to be a really good storage. Yeah, that was why I picked this one. And who doesn't like a yellow sweet onion? And then, of course, I did the Walla Walla. This is an old packet. Um, it was from last year. And how I understand it is onion seeds don't last very long. So I used those up, and I didn't have very many. But those are, let's see. So right here, you can see these blue tags are the Walla Wallas. And then I did these Zabrun, that's how you say it, shallots. And now I think you're supposed to be a little bit of an expert before you try shallots, but um, uh, how do you get to be an expert unless you try it? So I'm going to try it. Um, and you'll notice with the Walla Wallas and the Zabrun, I actually did do the soil blocks because I didn't have as many of those seeds. And so I wanted to test out that whole planting them in groups process um, so that you have like four or five of them in one kind of group all stuck together in the soil so I'm gonna try that that's new I also did these Southport red globe because those are also a really good storing onion one of the best keeping red types I guess is what it says I did a Patterson which is a really good um, this is supposed to be one for overwintering, so I can overwinter this one. Um, obviously I'm not doing that now because it is barely, winter is barely over. But 
I will succession seed those and yeah I got to figure out how I'm doing that but um, I'll plant more later in the summer and then I also did some bright lights Swiss Swiss chard and some red of Florence onions which are really pretty that's kind of a the elongated type um, I don't know they just looked pretty so I thought I would try them and I love red onion and I think that is it so I did my onions a couple of different ways I did so these Southport red onions I just filled the tray with soil and then kind of broadcasted them and then covered them up with a light dusting of soil I also did that with the red Florence onions um, but like I said with these Zabrun shallots and the Walla Wallas I actually did the cubes and what I really like about that is how easy it is to cover them up I didn't have to add extra soil in here I could just kind of push the soil into the dimple um, here are the Patterson onions I did that same way where I just broadcasted them in a flat and these are the sweet Spanish and then this tray has a little bit of a variety Here's my Swiss chard. I just want to get a little bit of Swiss chard started to put it in the um, in the greenhouse. This year, I'm I have a goal of adding the Earth Fest um, event that happens in northern Minnesota on Earth Day, and I want to be a vendor there, so I want to have something to sell. And I think this Swiss chard will be one of the things I can sell because it comes up pretty quick. It's like. 28 days or something um then I have this Monte Carlo lettuce which is kind of a mid-season lettuce but it's really um has really good bolt tolerance so I don't expect it to bolt and the reason I wanted the good bolt tolerance was because I'm putting it in the greenhouse and I'm just I just have no idea how early it's gonna get too hot in there so uh then I have some red ace beets over here and then the white tag is the American flag leak. Um, and I did, I did do all of these in the soil blocks. You can see I didn't start out doing them very well right here, but got better. <laughs> it was definitely a learning curve. It feels so good to get my hands back in the soil. And I wanted to show you something that I've been using. I don't know if any of you have been, um, have heard of the seed time app I'm going to show you a little bit about how I am scheduling this year okay so this is the seed time app and I have a calendar here which it looks like a ton because it is <laughs> but um, what I really like about this is if I just want to look at my onions I can go up here and type onions and it'll just bring up all of my actions or tasks for onions and you can filter your tasks over here so i just have showing right now the seeding transplanting and harvesting so for example let's look at this is my walla walla i seeded it today it was due to be seeded by the 8th of march um, and then i will transplant the walla wallas on May 4th so about two months later and then I will harvest the Walla Wallas down here mid-July so it's really been helpful because if you click this task button you see that I was actually overdue on the Swiss chard I had three tasks that I was supposed to get done last week um, and this bed prep for the beets and the carrots which the beds are already prepped so I can just check those off and then this was what I needed to get done for this week so I direct seeded beets oh I was gonna direct seed those whoops oh well I started them I'll transplant them 
um, but I will direct seed some carrots on the north bed of the greenhouse because that's where all the sun is right now. And then I seeded all my onions, leeks, and oh, I'm supposed to also do celery. Here's all the other onions. And then I'm gonna prep for a second bed of carrots in there. And here's my lettuce. So if you like to geek out over seeds and like really super organize your seeds, <laughs> This is kind of a fun way to do it. And I've kind of been working on this um, most of February, just adding in a few things as I go through my seed box. Um, but I was really feeling overwhelmed about, okay, you know, how are you really going to manage all of these plants? Um, and I think just having it so that you can break it down by tasks by day, which I'm sure when I get to the week of here let's look okay so if, let's look down here in April so if I look at like April 10th so these that'll be my tasks for April 10th so it just keeps going and going <laughs> but I have it says I have 58 tasks um, and literally I planted hundreds of onion seeds today so it doesn't take very long, but um, I'm really excited about the onions, if you can't tell. Weed in the garden in March. We're clearing this north bed today. I had left some pepper plants growing in here. So I'm gonna get it ready to direct sow some carrots. Well, Joel did an awesome job of cleaning up this north bed. So now I am ready to plant some Napoli carrots, some Chiaga beets, and some red ace beets. These I haven't grown before. These I have, but the seeds are kind of old, so I figured I should overplant and hopefully I'll get more beets. My goal again is to have these early so that when I start the farmer's market in June, I will, it'll not be too hot in here and I'll have um, food for the farmer's market. And I decided to plant on the north wall because right now the north wall is what's getting all of the sun because the sun is still Today is March 4th. The sun is still very low in the sky, and so the south bed is still pretty shaded. I'm just kind of broadcasting these. I, I think the uh, the instructions for these carrots is you want about 30 seeds a foot. So I'm just sprinkling them in 30 seeds a foot. And then I'll come back through and do one of the things I hate most, which is thinning carrots. I hate it because I feel like it's such a waste, both of seed and of time, but carrots are a hard thing to germinate. So it ends up working out pretty well. I haven't direct seeded a lot of things actually ever um, because I like the insurance that having a healthy seed having a healthy seedling gives you but in the case of carrots they do not want to be transplanted their root just wants to be planted in one place and stay there. I think that um, I could try the soil blocking with carrots because then you're not technically pulling them out of the soil. You're planting that soil block in another bed. So I don't know, that might be something interesting to try. Have any of you ever done that? I'd love to hear if you've tried soil blocking with carrots. And then I may, then I wouldn't have to thin, so that could be, oh, I'm having an aha moment here. Could that be a 
solution to my carrot thinning woes. I went in and grabbed a couple of tags, so don't forget to mark your rows. I'm just gonna mark the first and last rows. And now on to the beets. I'm going to make these also four to six and hopefully I don't have to thin them. But the nice thing about thinning beets is if you thin a beet, you can just put it in the ground somewhere else. These are my favorite beets, these Chiaga beets. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, if you don't like beets very much, that earthy flavor, um, then these are a really good beet for you. I found that I've gotten my kids to really like beets by planting this kind. They're a little less earthy flavored. And they have the cool red and white stripes. It's still getting quite cold in here overnight, but every time I come in in the morning, it's 40 degrees, so I think we're, we might still have a few nights that are freezing or below freezing in here. We'll definitely have them outside. This is Minnesota in March, so we will have lots of snow and I think it's one of our snowiest months, actually. I don't know if you guys can hear all the noises the chickens are making, but whenever I'm in here and they've kind of forgotten that I'm in here and they start making noise, <clears throat> I, it reminds me of Jurassic Park when the velociraptors are clicking at each other and making noises. <laughs> 